Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to the daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP. And I have a lot of stuff to talk about, so sit back, relax, and before we fully jump on into this video, I just want to ask you guys to please leave a like on this video. It does help the channel grow immensely, and I do greatly appreciate it. Also, if you guys do find any of the information in this video valuable or interesting at all, definitely you know be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on and i am greatly appreciative of that as well now overall you know today we've seen bitcoin try to jump up past 43k it got rejected which tells me we are not out of the waters yet i'm still expecting thirty-seven thousand dollars for bitcoin now um we broke our key level so i'm waiting for those lows to be swooped hey if they don't get targeted, then that's totally fine. Uh, I am more so specifically watching this Sunday for the weekly candle kind of close. I'm also watching Wednesday for the Fed to really kind of talk more about things. Uh, we see, you know, a few updates going out this week from the Fed. So I'm really kind of paying attention to that. But we do have, you know, some information from the Fed. So stay tuned till the end of this video because that's when I'm going to be talking about it. Uh, so definitely, you know, stay tuned to that. Now, is there something weird going on with Ripple or am I just like the only one noticing that they have been kind of, you know, recycling this, you know, content, talking more so about CBDCs, you know, they're talking about this being, you know, the sovereign equivalent of private cryptocurrencies and digital assets that enhance payments, promote inclusion, encourage competition and foster innovation. But this isn't the only thing that they've been, you know, sort of recycling. They've actually been recycling quite a bit of, you know, stuff in regards to even cross-border payments, uh, global inclusion in general, even SMEs. You know, they've been talking a lot about, you know, specifically tokenization, CBDCs, and even on-demand liquidity. So I don't know if it's just me, but I find this very weird. I, I, I think that they are pretty much hinting at a few things. Just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Also, I do feel the need to just apologize if you guys do hear my dogs playing in the background. Um, I am sorry. They are just, you know, rambunctious, so I do apologize for that. But overall, let's just jump in and let's talk more about some other things. Uh, but definitely let me know what you guys think about the CBDC connections down in the comments below. But I do want to talk to you guys a little bit about this quote here from, you know, the man himself, David Schwartz. XRP is an asset that can be used for settlement. It's kind of like gold that can instantly teleport around the world. It does actually move value and there's nothing to settle afterwards. I think that this is great in terms of, you know, really kind of identifying what XRP's main use case is, identifying how big Ripple essentially will become is to understand, you know, how you know, big of an issue, you know, pretty much settlement is right now. You know, I can make a payment with my bank account. You know, I could even slide my debit card. And by the time that my payment actually settles in my bank account, I could actually receive an Amazon package. I could do a lot before that actually settles. And yes, I did quote the ABA on that. I'm just saying in general, that's how bad of a world we live in currently on these massive outdated payment rails. It's terrible. Pre-approved accounts, pre-approved payments, and settlement is horrendous. All right. So understand that right now, the, the need for Ripple technology utilizing XRP is extremely need it. It's you know, crucial right now in terms of updating the new financial rails, aka the new financial infrastructure. Now we also see here from Tom Emmer, new digital you know, currency legislation coming soon. We're actually going to be connecting the dots here, but uh, yeah, I mean, we're going to see some exciting things happening here. I mean, I would like to see, you know, some sort of, you know, estimated time period here instead of soon. I would like to see like maybe in like five months, 10 months, whatever. But of course, in general, you know, we do know that this is coming soon, most likely in 2022, as we do know regulations are happening in 2022, from my overall opinion. Uh, from what I see going on with, you know, the Fed talks, we even see talks around, you know, regulations in general from a lot of higher up individuals as well. Apparently, 2022 is definitely going to be the year for regulations. And we also see here, this could be a way to bring a huge institution like Visa along by owning, you know, a financial institution that processes ODL transfers for RippleNet members. They could gain a lot of revenue while also gaining the ability to instant settlement. That would be a lot of incentives for them. And what Anders is talking about here, uh, he has this massive, you know, pretty much thread, which I think that you should all go check out. He's a must follow on Twitter, but he's talking about the Trangolo stuff, which again, 
if you guys didn't watch my video from yesterday, uh, you should definitely watch it because I was talking to um, you all about how Ripple is essentially making these massive links in their partnerships that is going to pretty much bring thousands of financial institutions and banks on board all at once. It's going to be absolutely massive in terms of mass adoption, but this is exactly what Anders is talking about here as well. We do see here, if we now do some heavy speculation, we've seen Visa make a couple of large purchases of RippleNet Partners, Earthport, and also Currency Cloud. I believe it's likely these will be hubs uh, processing on-demand liquidity payments. Currency Cloud was shown as a key RippleNet product or uh, partner, sorry, in January 2021. And of course, you do see Currency Cloud listed there, as well as even MoneyGram, by the way. I should I should mention that as well. Um, but in general, yeah, I mean, this is the case that we want to see. I mean, in, if we're talking about mass adoption of this technology, first off, we can't do one bank at a time. In order for us to actually, you know, have that, you know, flipping and switched, if you will, um, and pretty much adopting in this new financial infrastructure, we would need to have all banks on board it all at once in a simultaneous way. And I think that that is exactly what Ripple is doing with a lot of these partnerships. Like, for example, you know, the Tranglo stuff, uh, the Moha Loop, like a lot of the partnerships that they already have are absolutely massive, especially Finostra. But also, let's talk about one other one, and that is, yeah, that's right, Volante. So, uh, Volante is actually fairly large in terms of its name for not only its products and its solutions, but just in general for its customers. If you guys didn't see their customer list, you know, it's 100 plus customers in over 35 countries. And these are some of the largest financial institutions, banks in general. We're talking about Goldman Sachs, Wells Fargo, City. I mean, listen, they have a lot of huge names under them, you know, even being uh, Y Mellon as well. You know, definitely look into. Uh, Volante, if you guys haven't already, excuse me, um, because they are a fairly large company. And of course, you can see their products, Volpe, uh, Volante Designer, and they also have a ton of solutions in terms of migration, messaging, payments, open banking, and all that kind of stuff. But you might be wondering, well, what the heck is this all about? Where's the connection to, you know, of course, XRP? And we're going to get there. So um, initially, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about this. So Volpay, cross-border payments, Swift GPI, Ripple, Visa B2B, Visa Direct, and more. $200 billion worldwide annual re uh, revenues from cross-border payments. So this is fairly large. Uh, banks must improve their cross-border services. Next generation cross-border mechanisms, Swift GPI, Ripple, Visa B2B, Visa Direct, and others are rapidly gaining traction. If banks do not modernize their legacy services, competitors will close the gap. You know, and we even see up here consumers and businesses want better, faster cross border payments options. Uh, real time 24 7 services are in demand everywhere, and cross border is no exception. This is why I've always said pay attention to those assets that are focused on the cross border scene. And in my opinion, Ripple already has the partnerships laid out in front of them. They are already laying the bricks, the foundation, if you will, uh, to pretty much the whole house. And the whole house is going to include a ton of these massive partners. And of course, we do see down here, you know, a Volpay cross border payments connect. And this is talking about where you can pretty much connect to the, the technology that you could use. And we do see, you know, of course, Ripple is being mentioned here. Um, this is all focused around cross-border payments. And of course, you can see the innovative, you know, stuff behind it, talking about, you know, utilizing DOTs uh, for cross-border processing, which we know that ledgers are a big key piece of the pie. And of course, you can see compete, deploy, you can read all about, you know, Ripple, but we do see here, we view Volante as a critical partner for building Ripple's new real-time data-rich payments network. Of course they do. Um, and even Swift is on here as well. You know, in my mind, when we're talking about how large this will be, um, I think that this is actually going to be a fairly large partnership for Ripple if, you know, they're going to utilize Ripple at mass scale, which I don't see the reason not to. I think that Ripple is offering quite an interesting you know, suit of use cases and also, of course, you know, efficiencies compared to the other com uh, competitors here. But of course, we serve as a trusted partner to over 100 banks, financial institutions, market infrastructures, clearing houses, and corporate uh, treasuries in 35 countries. Our solutions and services process millions of transactions and trillions in value every day, powering four of the top five corporate banks, 40% of all U.S. commercial bank deposits, and 70% of worldwide card traffic trillions in value every single day i just want you guys to understand how large volante 
payments is or Volante just in general um, as a company. And of course, we do see here Volante Technologies launches Accelerator for bank integration to Ripple's distributed financial technology 2015. This goes back to 2018, mind you. Okay, and shout out to Bank XRP for this back in 2018. Um, but the reason why I bring it up is because I want you to all understand that the Ripple and Volante roots go way back. US based banking heavyweight BNY Mellon have joined forces to create and deploy technology to enable real time payments in the US and internationally. And of course, we do see Ripple being a main connection here uh, to really kind of connect the bank A to bank B, essentially, uh, which again, you know, we do see down here, Volante's Ripple plugin receives payment from application and according to business rule and in initiates Ripple payment process, the Volante Ripple plugin also manages all the required API calls and payment messages for uh, transformation to the required formats uh, for Ripple, Ripple, sorry. And of course, you can really kind of see exactly why they would utilize Ripple. I mean, we've talked about it many times in terms of cross-border payments. But this is a fairly fast process too. I know that this seems like a lot going on here, but this is pretty much real-time payments. This is instant payments pretty much almost. So, and again, I've always said, pay attention to how they will get to, guess what? The real-time payment scene, aka the instantaneous payments they would have to utilize XRP. So always pay attention to what is happening behind the closed doors. And of course, talking about the closed doors, Again, Volante Technologies, Federal Reserve Payments Pilot, uh, incorporates Ripple partner Volante Technologies. This goes back to February. I just recently talked to you guys about this a while back. Uh, we are coming up on the one-year mark for this article to really kind of be celebrating its one-year anniversary. But of course, Ripple partner Volante Technologies becomes the latest fintech company to join the Federal Reserve's new instant payments pilot scheme. Uh, the, service, the service will help provide American consumers and businesses with instant payment services. Uh, this comes as Ripple Labs nears its first checkpoint in a battle with the SEC. And uh, this is talking about that FedNow service. If you guys do want to read more about this, I actually have a video on this um, somewhere on my channel. Uh, but I did talk to you guys about the FedNow uh, connections to Ripple. I do believe that, you know, this is all kind of connected in some sort of way. I, I've always discussed this. I've always talked about it as well. There's a lot of roots being, you know, connected here. And they all stem right back to one massive name. And that is Ripple. And of course... Talking about the Fed, it would be disrespectful to disregard what we just seen released today. And that is Jerome Powell says report on digital currencies is ready to go. Now, this is going to be happening within the next few weeks. Uh, the U.S. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell today said that the government report on cryptocurrencies is expected to come out within the next few weeks. However, answering questions from Senator uh, Mike Crapo or Crapo. Um, Powell noted that the report was delayed due to other priorities. The report really is ready to go, and I would expect we will drop it. I hate to say it again in the coming weeks, but it is really, you know, is in a situation where it's ready to go. Uh, and of course, adding the federal digital dollar could coexist with private stable coins. It was hard, and we didn't get uh, it quite to where we needed to get it, but it's effectively there now. And I will tell you, it's within weeks we will be publishing it. So, overall, we are seeing a lot of updates in terms of the digital space. Uh, we are seeing essentially going all the way back to the beginning of, you know, when everybody was getting bullish on XRP, pretty much everything come to fruition, aka digitization of the entire payment infrastructure, CBDCs, tokenization, digitization in general. Like this makes me so bullish to be in this space. Um, seeing, you know, governments pretty much move in on crypto, especially in the U.S., I think that this is incredible to say the least. And of course, when we're talking about regulations coming into the play, and of course, ISO 222 on its way, I just think that this space is going to get even more bullish as time goes on. I think that this year is going to be extremely huge for crypto uh, and crypto adoption in general. Let me know what you guys think about that down in the comments below. But of course, if you guys all did enjoy this video, uh, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on if you guys want more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, I hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.